Well, Leute, Silly Hu mal wieder hier am Start. Äh, oder Silly Gurke. Ich bin Silly Gurke. Warte, wie heißt. Ich weiß nicht mehr, wie dieser Werbe-YouTube-Channel für Lasergruppenland heißt. Ich sag immer Silly Huhn, oder? <lacht> Komplett lost. Jedenfalls sind wir heute auf dem gratis erreichbaren Minecraft-Server Lasergruppenland mit der Domain sillyhuhn.com. Alternativ, wenn ich aufhöre, diese Domain zu zahlen und meine IP behalte, wird die IP 149.202.137.134 bleiben. Ähm, aber da das ein lang, lang, lang Zeitprojekt ist, äh, wer weiß, ob die IP nicht doch im Laufe der Zeit wechselt und oder die Domain oder ob sogar der Hoster wechselt, weil, falls ich mal ähm, aufhören sollte, hier diesen Server zu betreiben, werde ich die Map veröffentlichen. Ähm, genau. Und dann kann das jemand anderes übernehmen. Alles klar. Dann joinen wir doch mal. Ich habe offscreen eine Menge Zeug äh, gemacht, bin mehrfach, ich glaube einmal gestorben oder so, habe alle Level verloren, äh, habe alle Level wiederbekommen, habe Zeug entschartet, unten habe ich Felder angebaut und so weiter. Genau, und wir pumpen heute einen Talk von Aaron Jones, Introduction to Freenet. Der Junge hat mich beim letzten Talk über, was war das, Introduction to Tor, äh, voll gecatcht mit seinem Freenet Gelaber, dass es doch so viel besser sei. Ich weiß, es war subtile sagen wir fast schon Eigenwerbung. Ich weiß nicht, wie weit der involviert ist, Freenet ist, aber er ist da auf jeden Fall beißt. Aber er äh, hat mich auf jeden Fall gecatcht und deswegen schauen wir da jetzt diesen, in diesen Talk rein. Also Aaron Jones Introduction to Freenet. Let's go. Let's start talking about Freenet. So, what I want to start with is I took this talk right here and I went on to the Freenet IRC and I talked to the lead developer and I talked to several other developers mm, at Freenet yeah. and I gave them this talk ahead of time. That's why this says 11, February 11th, because I got this thing done and I handed this off to these guys and asked them to review it. And I'm going to tell you up front, they had some disagreements with some of the wording that I used. Uh, they particularly didn't like when I used things like claims. They wanted me to use something stronger than claims, but I wasn't willing to do that, so I didn't make that change. Um, simply because, and we'll talk about this here in a minute, some of the stuff that goes on in some of these projects that we'll address later. But they did review it. I was told that this was a pretty good talk and that they mostly approved of it. So let's start with the Freenet project itself. So this is the Freenet web page. This is where you're going to go if you want to pull down a copy of Freenet, if you want to be able to look at some of their wiki stuff. Essentially, this is going to be your main hub for where you're going to head as you want to learn more about this, because we're going to kind of do a very wide overview, then we're going to break down some of the court cases that Freenet is involved in, and then we're going to move on to installing it and things like that. So. Now, 
obviously promote a YouTube PL. If you pull down a YouTube video, press it, and then you can serve that file up straight over free. Okay? That's you gotta kinda of think outside the box on this people like this. Um, let's compare this to four. With four you have access to an internal network, right? You can insight. And then in addition to that you have exit nodes that allow you to jump out to the live internet, right? Is everybody familiar with that concept between you know, an internal network and an external network in four? Yes. Good. Freenet doesn't really function. Okay? Freenet is a little bit different. And I do want to make this statement up front. I really like it. Come to any of my media talks and listen to me discuss some <laughs> product. I have a huge problem with the way that the internet works. I like go for images, video, whatever. Everything's the same. It's very easy to go after. Um, we don't really have that anymore. If you look at some of these web pages nowadays, they are serving you data that adds up to 750, 800, 900 megabytes worth of stuff that they dump to your browser every time you go to their web page. Uh, the New York Times is bigger than Doom. Like video <laughs> game Doom. You could get Doom on floppy. You can't fit the New York Times on floppy, okay? Lovely. So just to give you kind of a, a an idea of where we're at, all right? Now, <laughs> I mentioned publishing. They do not and cannot silence the user. That's mm. more important here in a moment. But hmm. a philosophy that they have, which is extremely important. It's their thought process to how they do things. It's how they implement things. And it's how they work with the public on this project. Okay, so let's keep that in mind. So to me, privacy is really important. And some of you are probably gonna be like, oh man, working at a police station, blah, 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 <laughs> privacy, who would have thought, right? Privacy is a counterweight to the amount of force that others can exert on us without our consent. Full stop, that's what privacy is. I can share information with you, but I'm trusting you with that data, right? Uh, whatever that data might be. And for certain people, I don't need them to know that I work at the police department. And for certain people, I don't need them to know that I use Linux. It's just the people that I wanna share that information with, I do so, and for other people, I don't. And that's based on my consent. I get to make that decision. This counts for all of you as well, okay? Because if a person is well informed about us, we are less likely to be able to voice unpopular opinions, cause questions, take any kind of action that could be construed as outside the norm. You can't ask questions anymore if you have to live in fear. I don't like that idea. I don't want people to live in fear. A lack of privacy prevents people from being able to think for themselves for fear of being punished or ostracized by the group. Anybody ever heard of the term doxing? A couple of heads nodding. Okay, for those of you who don't know the word doxing or don't understand it, doxing is about documents. It's the act of going on the internet or using whatever tools are made available to you, including breaking into cell phone records or contacting companies, gathering information about a target and then releasing that information in a manner designed to harm that person. Oftentimes, doxing is done in conjunction with an action called swatting. Everybody know swatting? Okay, for those of you who don't, I saw couple of heads not nod, so if you're not participating, you get the full answer, okay? Um, swatting is the act of calling in a fake emergency in order to draw in law enforcement to react in some way, uh, in a negative manner. If you were here for my last class, we did the roundup where we discussed all the stuff that happened. Uh, we just had our first two swatting deaths where people actually died due to the SWAT. Um, an individual up in Kansas, he was gunned down, didn't have anything to do with the swatting. The guy just took the wrong house. Called in a SWAT team, sent him over there. They shot this dude, he was a father of three, uh, single father, father of three, taking care of a bunch of kids, and they shot him right in front of his house. He was involved in the situation with this other guy called in. If you want to 
learn more, you can follow through to some of the other talks that I've done, and you can see that. We haven't had the video put up yet, but we will, but uh, you can still read the notes and such. That's important, okay? Privacy allows you to do things without worrying about somebody taking your information and putting it out on the internet and saying the word, well, you know what to do with this, which I have seen on Twitter. Everybody knows what action to take with this data. We want to be able to enhance our privacy. We want to be able to make the decision on who will and will not be able to look at whatever it is that we want to provide them. You need to be able to have a platform. Anybody know what's probably a majorly effective tool for silencing discourse on the internet? DDoS. Denial of service. Because if I don't like what you say, you are hosted on a specific platform, potentially I can go and I can gather the right resources necessary to either cause enough of a stink that your provider is going to just cancel you because you're toxic and they don't want to deal with your toxicity, or I'm going to bring those servers to their knees and eventually they're going to kick you off the platform anyway. You should not use Freenet if your main goal is to post on Facebook, serve YouTube, or use tools like email. That's not what this thing is for. Okay? Freenet is for individuals introduced, interested in contribution and discussion. It's about content. That as well. Now, everybody here have a GitHub? Yes? If you do not have a GitHub account, you need to get some kind of GitHub or GitLab account. I don't care what you use, but I'm on GitHub and I'm using GitHub pages for my stuff here. So if you notice, there's some spelling mistakes. You should not use Freenet, it's you main goal. Down at the bottom, you can actually click on GitHub, and you can go to this project, you can fork it, and then you can send me a pull request to fix these things. For, I, I get this asked pretty much at the end of every class. What can I do to, to contribute to projects? How do I start building a footprint that shows people that I know how to use Git, know how to do a little bit of programming, so on and so forth? This is an opportunity for anybody who wants to do so. You can pull this thing, fix that word, and then I will accept the change request. And you can add this to your GitHub, okay? So if you don't have a lot of projects that you've worked on, this is how you get started, okay? Because if you don't, within a few days, I'm going to go in here and fix this myself, just FYI. <laughs> and there's a couple other places where I made mistakes, too. So how does Freenet work? Well, if you click on this link, Kent State University gives a fantastic breakdown on peer-to-peer -peer file sharing, impact of peer-to-peer -peer file sharing and several peer-to-peer -peer applications, including Nutella, BitTorrent, and Freenet. So if you would like the scientific background to how Freenet functions and what Freenet does and how it's working on the back end, this right here is a great way to get started. It talks about several products, it talks about how they communicate and the way that these, excuse me, tools function. Kind of dry, but that's not really what we're going to focus on. start with how to install it, and then we'll move forward from there. Now, I just asked you all about GitHub, and I introduced GitHub, and I talked it up real, real big. Guess what? Freenet is on GitHub, okay? And I already did all the hard work for you. And this right here is the Freenet, Freenet uh, daemon, and this right here is a project for you to be able to work with Freenet. Now, I usually ask, I see some new faces in here, so we're going to do this question. I'm sure some of you have heard this before. Everybody has heard that Linux is very, very secure because there's many, many eyes looking at it, correct? Lots and lots of eyes on Linux, so it's very, very secure. Anybody here who has read every single line of the <laughs> Linux kernel, please raise your hand. Wie viel waren das? Zwei Millionen oder so? Anybody? Okay. It's just, we just don't. Everybody's kind of in that mindset that, well, somebody will find it. Somebody will look. They'll find it. Somebody will find it. And potentially they will, maybe 20 years later. Look at what's going on with Spectre, right? That has been a, a bug within the code for about 20 years. And guess what? We found it. 
Somebody located it. But it took 20 years to get to that point. Okay? So, <gasps> what I want you all to do is when you have time, just look. Look at the contribution. Look at some of the, um, look at some of the commits. Start checking out these pull requests. There's a ton of stuff that is informational, including if you start looking at these pull requests. I want to point this out. Oh my god. Uh, they have bugs. They have. Uh, I should have. I should have pulled this up earlier. I apologize, but. As you go through this, they have a whole bunch of security issues that they're actually reviewing publicly, so you can see problems that are within the system and how they're discussing how to fix them. In addition to that, they have an IRC that you can go to so you can sit in on their IRC. This is a good project, and I'm urging everybody here to actually go sit down and read, see what they're doing, see how they're working, and see how they interact. Okay, All of this is available to you, and I'm not sure. Maybe everybody here already knows that. Maybe you know that you can go to it. But the problem that we have is, even though we know we can all go to the kernel, we can all go see it, somebody else is doing it, right? But if you're going to be using this tool, especially if you're going to be using it for your privacy, or potentially using it to provide a method of communication for somebody in a non-permissive environment, well, you should probably know what you're doing with this tool, and how it's used, and what kind of concerns So you don't have an excuse. You gotta stop, you gotta look at the tool, you need to know how it is made, who is making it. Who's contributing to it? If you're not familiar with it, you're not gonna be ready when somebody shows up to sabotage this thing and starts making changes that you can identify as a problem. And we'll get into that in a little bit too. Now for me, I host things externally. I don't like to keep things internally on my network. Now I come from United States. I work in law enforcement. Everybody knows I deal with all of these tools. Everybody knows that I talk about this stuff all the time. Everybody knows that you can get a hold of me online and all kinds of different chat programs and on Signal and in IRC and you can hit me up on Keybase and so on and so forth. And I'm always there answering questions about all of these tools. So for me, I'm okay with hosting my installation somewhere else. Uh, when I was discussing this with the Freenet developers, some of them had a very, very strong opinion that it should be on your personal hardware within your reach, and it should not be installed anywhere that you can't physically grab that box. Okay? And then some of them were just like, well, as long as you pick a place you're happy with, it's probably fine. And now this is where we're going to start getting into that threat making. What matters, what doesn't. I have a link here. This is Acquire Hosting. And I will open this real quick. Well, it's going to open anyway. So this is Scaleways. I love these people. They're in France and Amsterdam. And one of the coolest things about them is they have a C1 bare metal SSD cloud server for $2.99 euro that comes out to like $3 and some change, I think, right now. Uh, where you get four dedicated ARM v7 cores, two gigs of memory, and 50 gigabyte SSD disk. I have one of those, and then I have one of these C2 series. Uh, a device up there? So I can just to hear this. Yeah, you yeah, me Or, I'm sorry, I have one of these ARM64 series. You can. Check this out if you want to. That link doesn't have any kind of referral thing. I don't get paid for this. And again, nobody um, oh, he finished. like getting anything out of it. I'm just telling you about it, okay? And if you guys don't like it, that's fine. But pick your favorite country, pick a provider, get yourself a VPS. You don't have to spend more than three or four bucks to do it, and you can install this thing. A month. Now, mm -hmm. I'm going to give you a short explanation about why I feel that this is a good idea. Everybody got to read all the NSA leaks and all the other stuff that was coming out, right? You guys stopped to look at some of those documents that were coming in and 
some of the PowerPoints that came out and the explanations of how they were targeting people, right? Well, I hope you did. I hope you actually stopped to look at that stuff and you didn't let it just get filtered down by somebody else who interpreted it for you. Yeah, there were three, but if three, three. you didn't, I'm going to interpret it for you. At a certain point within one of those PowerPoint files, uh, NSA leaked out that one of their main targets were users of Linux magazines. So if you had a Linux magazine subscription, you were a potential target for the NSA because you were considered dangerous because you used Linux. You're a little too smart for them and for their life. And that was right in their PowerPoint. So in addition to that, they also check the traffic on all the houses here within the US. So whatever it is that you're doing on your home network, it's going to go most likely up to Utah, and it's going to get dumped to a great big old building that they occasionally take pictures of the outside of and put on the internet. And then from there, they can see what you're doing at your home. And maybe they see that you have a VPN and that you have VPN traffic and that you've been to a web page about four or high 2 p or Freenet or Nutella or whatever, so on and so forth. And guess what? They're actually looking for that stuff. And within their PowerPoint documentation, it says, we're looking for that because those people are dangerous. Too smart know too much, you need to pay attention to those people. Because the only reason why they would be looking at that stuff is, is because they're up to no good. Which that's an attitude I don't like. I don't believe that, I don't think that's true. Um, what do I know, right? I'm just a guy who works in the police department. But when I look at privacy, I look at it as an opportunity to defend your rights. I look at it as an opportunity for you to make the decision about what you want to share with others. And if you don't want to share your love or whatever, uh, those little balls that are made out of like ceramic, what I'm talking about, right? Sure, that's fine. If you don't want people to know about that, that's okay. That's your prerogative, okay? Now, I also have a host country list. You buy hosting from one of these places, you're probably going to end up on that list. Oh, it's fucking hosting about okay. me. No, I'm just going to name just off some of these places. Eight Panama, eight Panama Hong Kong, Seychelles. I didn't even know that place existed until I started doing research on this. So, Slovakia, Hungary, Russia, Syria, Turkey, and yes. Oh, I dear. did Whoa. go and find, and I'm probably on a list somewhere too. Uh, Syria has very, very inexpensive hosting right now. It may not be very reliable. And I did test the speeds and it's a little slow. It's about 150 kilobits per second, okay? That's about the max. I maxed it out at about 150 kilobits. But for about $2 and some change US, you can get yourself a little VPS out there in Syria, okay? Now, that's gonna open, what that? Is it route to Israel? I, you know, I don't know. That's a... That's a good question, actually. So Turkey, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so you have a ton of different places where you can go and you can pick a VPS from. Again, it all comes back to what's your threat, what are you worried about, where do you want to host it. And in addition to that, it can be an unlikely but potential event that you get pulled up in front of either a police officer or a judge. What do you want to have to explain? Now, when I talk to my students, I'm going to explain to you exactly how I tell my students. Everybody here looks like you were probably alive, except for one of you, uh, back when Saturday night specials were a thing. Everybody remember that term? It was for a handgun. And they would say, there's a Saturday night special. And I remember as a child, I actually told my mother, you need to buy one of those. I don't know what that is, but that thing scares people and you should have that now. My mother was a single mother, and so that's usually I, I lived with her, and we lived in a rough neighborhood. But the idea behind this Saturday night special is this, like, scary, terrible, awful thing that is dangerous for everybody. You don't want to be the person in the Saturday night special. You know what I mean? Especially when you're standing in front of somebody who's 78 years old and doesn't know what the internet is, doesn't understand any of the terms. You don't want to be that guy. Just like some of you are my students previously, and 
I've walked through my classroom and looked at the stickers on the computer and told them, you don't want that sticker on your computer if a police officer is interviewing you. That's a dumb move. Take that off. You don't want to be that person. So again, pay attention to what it is that you're doing, make smart choices, and choose depending on what the threat is. Okay? And then of course I have a link right here that says get the installer. Right, right, get the installer. I even have some instructions here. You can w get that file, pull it onto your PDF, and then upon doing so, you gotta use Java. Now, oh yeah. Freenet is done in Java. And that's also another yeah, important yeah. thing to understand. Now, it is not the Java that is hooked up to your web browser and is used to exploit your system. This is an actual like Java runtime. Okay, this is the jar is going to run it. Uh, some people don't want to have Java on their system, but if you're running headless and you're not running a browser and you're not allowing the Java to be run within the browser, it may not be as bad. Again, this is up to you to make that decision. Everybody here can make the decision of looking at that code base, looking at how it runs, and decide yes or no. Again, I don't want to stuff on my code base. Okay? That's another thing that you can find. And then, once we've done all that, you're still going to want to access this stuff locally. And most of what you're going to do with Freenet is actually going to be done within the web browser. So how are we going to do that? If we have this running on a server and we don't want other people to have access to configuration and making changes, well, it's really easy. We're going to use a tunnel. And we've talked a little bit on tunnels in here using SSH tunnels. Um, I'm going to break it down for you. The idea behind the SSH tunnel is, is we make a connection between our computer and another computer, and we make those ports that we choose available to us so that on our local host, we can hit a specific port, and really what we're doing is interacting with the port on the remote system. Make sense? Everybody follow? Perfect. So SSH, switch, capital L for Lima, and then you set your ports. Uh, default ports are 8888, 127.0.0.1, .0 .0 and then 8888, and then whatever login connection information you can actually access. Uh, I actually recommend that you either turn this bash uh, like shortcut, create a little shortcut bash, use fish, and so you just make a little function to be able to do this. Mm -hmm. Bash comes up on functions, but make sure you're using SSH to secure the server correctly. Okay. I probably shouldn't have to say this, but I'm going to say it anyways. When you set up your server, remember, don't just jump in there and start turning off on firewall. Update. Make sure that your system is locked down first. Nothing, no access to any port except for port 22, and then from there start to open. We're going to be opening other ports. Okay. Once you've done that, we can then open a local browser and then surf over to localhost 8888. That allows us to gain access to that system's configuration. So now, once you or need to expose port 8888 to the internet. Okay, don't go into UFW and enable 8888 or anything like that on the server, okay? Make this as though you are locally within the box. Make this run, okay? And then the very first thing that you'll probably want to do is head on over to status internet connection to get your ports. And there you can use your firewall to open the ports. The ports are going to be different for every person. That's why I haven't been to that. Part of the security of this is making it go start scanning servers on the internet, know what port to look for to find the internet installation, okay? It's uh, the idea of making it a little bit more convenient. So, setting up Freenet is actually kind of long, really, especially the first time you go through it. It looks super it really does. Sorry, guys. Uh, when you set up this thing, it's essentially you're going to go through and you're going to have some drop down boxes and so on and so forth. There's going to be a lot of hitting next with a whole bunch of warnings about potentially this can get you in trouble, this is dangerous, that is dangerous, and so on and so forth. So I'm going to kind of break it down for you for a user what you need to do and 
reliability, but you're going to contribute to the network. The size of the network is going to grow. There's going to be more available for everybody to use. Remember, this is a peer-to-peer -peer system. So if you're not putting into the system, you're not going to really be able to use this thing. It's going to ask you to set a good password to it. Use your password manager. Uh, pay attention to what you're doing. Everybody here knows, correct, don't use the same password everywhere. Use a strong password, use a password manager, so on and so forth. You shouldn't have to explain these things, but oftentimes you do have to retouch on that. And then in addition to that, they do warn you, and I'm a firm believer in this as well. Be wary of your manner of the screen name use. How did they get Dread Pirate Roberts? Anybody know? Anybody know who Dread Pirate Roberts is? 
No, well, yes. But also, that's the screen name that was used by the guy who was running Silk Road. So, that guy, the Silk Road guy, the Dread Fire Robert, uh, what he did was he made Silk Road. There was nobody using it, okay? So, die Geschichte schon wieder, die hat doch im Tor Talk auch schon oder der würde sie noch erzählen, weil der hat ja danach kommt er erst. Timestamp. GPS coordinates. <coughs> information about the computer that it was hooked up to, so on and so forth. There's a ton of information available for almost every single kind of file type. Okay? If you put that stuff out on the internet, somebody can pull it down and look at all of that stuff. Uh, even in this class, what do we talk about? Steganography, right? You take an image, put more stuff inside of that image, and then go send it out into the world. People look for that stuff constantly. That's not unheard of anymore. Uh, it's not a it's not a secret. Metadata, steganography, that's what they're looking for. Now how about low confidence? This is where we start getting into more groundwork, okay? Uh, anybody here ever do a signing party? See, see trading? You go out and you register a, a, a PGP key and then you come in and you do trading to make sure that everybody can physically see Shake your hand and then sign your keys. No. You know, we've, done a, we've done it a few times here. Nice. Plus, so we okay, well, anybody here using Keybase? After I talked about that? Yeah? Okay, cool. Actually, you'll add me on Keybase at some point. Retro 64 XYZ. Hit me up on Keybase. Uh, again, it's a method of being able to trade secure keys with each other so that you can communicate with each other and actually know who they are. Now, I talk about this in another talk, but I'm going to touch on it right here because it's important. Uh, sometimes, it's not so much about being able to hide who you are as it is about being able to prove who you are. Okay? Sometimes businesses are in a situation where somebody picks up the phone and calls them and says, hey, look, you need to send this money to the bank or we're not going to be able to make payroll this month. Well, is it the bank or not? So being able to trade those keys and be able to work with that, that information allows you to do things a little bit more securely within your, your uh, circle. So, again, similar to trading information, you're in a signing party. What we want to be able to do is seek out like-minded individuals, trade connection data, and use high or maximum protection settings. Freenet's maximum protection settings requires for you to build what is known as a dark net. When they talk about a dark net, this is what they're discussing. You of us get together, we all know each other, visibly see each other, and each one of us hooks our um, free net installations together. OK? 
okay? And that builds a inner core resiliency against other people being able to know who we are, but also protects us from being able to connect to other systems that we may not want to connect to. Uh, and they can be small groups or large groups, but obviously the most important part is that it does trust. Now, this I kind of have a problem with because A, most of us are not going out and being very social. When the bell rings and we say that this class is over and everybody leaves, very, very few people are going to stop, turn around, shake somebody's hand and go, hey, I want to get to know other Linux users a little bit better. And, hey, we ought to set up a dark net here so that we can start communicating that way. In addition to that, we need to gain greater access to the network. We're still really going to need to have a few people who are running normal security. Okay? So essentially, the normal security person is going to connect to some of these people who are using high and maximum security in order to still funnel information from a greater net down into them, while the rest of them are using a maximum protection. So again, it all depends on who you're communicating with, where, and how, it, how the fuck you Don't connect to people you don't know. Don't just do it over there. Make sure that you know who you are and it's trust. And on the page, it's actually going to give you a nice warning. It says, adding people with friends you don't know will not include your security. Okay. Right there at the bottom. Not going to go to Always use high protection for downloads and employ a strong password. Okay? Now, keep in mind, if you're on a VPS, anything that you're doing on that VPS is essentially available to the VPS provider. Uh, once you've got HTOP installed, or I'm sorry, once you've got Freenet installed, open up POP or HTOP and then do a search for the word Freenet and you will see where Freenet is running within the system. You can see that, they can see that. Okay? Just. That's their state. So it's not Freenet like installed. Open up POP. Keep in mind, if you're on a VPS, anything that you're doing on that VPS, is essentially available to the VPS provider. Oh, yeah, the uh, provider yeah. Once you've got HTOP installed, or I'm sorry, once you've got Freenet installed, open up POP or HTOP and then do a search for the word Freenet and you will see where Freenet is running into the system. You can see that, they can see that. Okay? Just rule of thumb right there. Anything that you download to the system is going to be available for anybody to view who connects and looks at the box. In addition to that, they regularly at most of these places you back up. They, they keep track of your system, okay? Usually for health reasons. Make sure that it's okay. Make sure that all your files are still there. And if there's a major crash or whatever, they're going to try to recover all the stuff and get you back up and running, right? Well, that means all of that data is It doesn't take anything from somebody to go out and get a warrant and hand that warrant over and say, I need access to this VPS and all the data that was stored on it and for them to cough that up. So I'm not here to tell you, oh, this is going to be the perfect way for you to go out and do dumb stuff and get you in trouble. What I'm here to do is to tell you if you're worried about privacy, if you're worried about taking care of yourself, the greater good of everybody else who wants to use this product for privacy, then this is a way to do it. But it will not be a way to do it if you're worried about somebody kicking in the door and going to bed because you were looking at Fallon Gong. Okay? Keep in mind, keep track of it. So let's move to one of the main words. Okay? And what I did was I went out and looked for the biggest thing in the world. That's the daily don't know the daily stormer. Um, they're sort of a racist, white supremacist organization that really picked up a lot of traction in terms of people paying attention. They had a Twitter account, they had access to social media and so on and so forth. They were doing the web 2.0 thing to spread their message. And what ended up happening was we got started complaining. And then after they started complaining, they actually started telling Cloudflare, uh, for those who do not know, take a step back here, Cloudflare is a company that provides DOS protection for 
well as other services. Essentially, anybody who pays for it. Okay. So, with the Daily Stormer under attack, they go to Cloudflare, they start paying their $12 a month. Cloudflare brings them under their umbrella, just like they would with other companies. And at that point, uh, people decided to stop targeting Lord. the Daily Stormer, and instead, they targeted Cloudflare. Now, that caused a lot of problems with Cloudflare, like upper management. The guy who owns Cloudflare decided he was going to go jump on um, Twitter and start telling people, look, we're here to defend uh, free speech. We're here to do everything in our power to give everybody ample opportunity to do X, Y, and Z. And at first, his message was a very specific way, and then that message changed. And uh, what he decided to do was he got on Twitter and started making posts and then at some point, he claimed that he single-handedly uh, canceled the account for the Daily Stormer, took them off of Cloudflare protection, and then upon doing so, they immediately came down. Like, their web pages down. Because there was people constantly attacking them. There was DDoSes pointed at them at what amounted to a 24-7 base. Okay? Personal note, I feel that the action that was taken was done at the wrong time because of the fact that that was right around when we were talking about what? Network neutrality. So network neutrality was going up and they made the decision to essentially censor a company, whether for better or for worse, whatever you feel about those guys, it doesn't matter. But the fact of the matter is they got up and they made this decision right in the middle of the network argument, right? So upon doing that, somebody was able to get up and say, well, if they can make the decision of who gets on or off the internet, how come time works? And at that point, people say, well, why can't time work? They decide how much they're paid for they, they got to make that decision. $12 and 99 cents will turn up every month.
they're going to need to implement a way of cracking the site, of locating the site, of cutting them off the net. And once you do that, once you cross that privacy line, once you cross that line, you can't cross that. Because we can turn off the race of hate site, but then I can just point that exact same tool at the Malagong site. Or at the, I don't know, the Kachina doll site. Whatever site I want to turn off, <laughs> then at that point I just point the gun right at that site. Build it, arm it, then it doesn't matter, it's just where they're going. Okay. Now this turned into a huge issue. Okay? You have half the people on here saying code like that doesn't exist. Not exist, you will not exist, I will not continue to exist. Uh, this individual right here says, insert slippery smoke argument focused on four B squares and the future of arbitrary monkey. Again, once you offer the opportunity to present here, then you can just present. It doesn't matter who you're pointing it at, it's up to part of you. And some of the people said, well, this is really easy to implement, I can write something out real quick, you give me a core onion address, and then I can just add it to like a black list. And then anybody can take onion addresses and add them to the black list. But that also means that once those nodes start blocking access to that, that individual cannot access that information. So you have two sides of the party asking, hey, this is a this is a feature. I want this. And other people saying this is very dangerous. I recommend going through here and just reading them on the screen. It looks like everybody got involved. Okay? Everybody. Like the developers, uh, their uh, PR people. If you want to know what they went through during this period of time, this is your, this is your magic opportunity. Um, people were spitballing all kinds of ideas during that time. Now, that point, finally, the court they decided their argument was we are here to defend right. That was their official thing. No matter who you are or what it is that you want to do, you're going to use the work. There are many more people who are doing more for good than there are people who do more for bad, and therefore they're going to decide the people who are doing more for good. Uh, this blog post I'm going to use the word riot among many of the individuals who worked on the core project or within it or around it. Uh, there was a lot of people who got really angry about this. Now, if you do not know, I just originally started a DARPA project and we involved, essentially the U.S. government created core and then handed it off to the developers and told them and they continued that. They built the core project. Many of the head developers stayed on. This this project moved out, but the, the roots themselves were about providing people an opportunity to use the internet in a secure manner behind what amounts to enemy lines so that they could communicate out into the world. Okay? Which meant censorship, uh, any of those things are sort of the complete opposite of what they're trying to accomplish here. Oh, I was not surprised that their statement came out as we're not going to do that because they essentially they can't. There's too many people who rely on this for um, some things that doing something like this would not be a good idea. Okay? And I'm talking governments, I'm talking military, I'm talking just a ton of people are on this who are using it in the sort of the background noise amongst all the civilians who are using as well. Now, at that point, Freenet comes out. Because other people came to Freenet and said, hey, we want you to censor these people. What if they moved Freenet? What are you going to do? And they said, since the very beginning of the project, until the end of the project, this project is going to take a binary attitude and that they, they believe that all speech should be allowed, but any speech 
matter what you want to put on the Freenet network, fine. But if somebody wants to argue it or provide alternative content that is against that, then they're fine. Anybody can do that. I feel that that is a correct stance to take. You can't have your cake and eat it too. You can't silence a handful of people and then just kind of hope that they don't do the same to the other handful of people. Okay, the tool has to be made for us. It is what it is. Uh, it's another reason why I like the Freenet project. Now, is it a hill for them to die on? I don't know. They have not had a situation yet in which Freenet became the center of a topic like that. So who knows if they will or will not stick to it. You never know. But at this point in time, that is the state of the state. So now let's start talking about the attack network. Where is it vulnerable? What can people do to take this thing down or to reduce quality? So there are a handful of vulnerabilities that uh, potentially can reduce the quality of the network or access and poison. There are certain physical issues that we're going to need to discuss as well that are very, very important as well need to start to First place that I really want you all to go to. So for those of you who have not done a lot of work with GitHub, GitHub has a method by which you can also create a wiki. So Freenet has their wiki uploaded directly to GitHub. You can actually go here and they go over a lot of their stories. We talk about them. It's not a hidden thing. The vulnerabilities are discussed, the ways of uh, manipulating those vulnerabilities for those, uh, preventing those, against, those uh, vulnerabilities from being used. All of that information is done right up front. Okay? Again, another reason why I like this project. I like the fact that they're willing to come out and give you different information on how to debug, how to work with it, how to test. All of that is right here. All served right up to you. Uh, first stop. Anybody. Okay? That's nice. Check the code, get the thing installed, get it configured and set up, and the very next thing that you should be doing is starting the process of learning about how can this be uh, for, um, for those of you who have been in my class, you may not know this, but the thing that I tell everybody is when you are working with these tools, the most important thing that you can learn is how does it harm where does it go? Where does this thing go from a toy to a weapon? Uh, think about the command R M. What does it do? File, right? I can R M a file and I can free up space on my computer. I can R M files whenever I need to, to get rid of them. I can R M R S. I can remove the folder. Knock that thing right out, right? And then I can sudo rmrf forward slash, slam that inner key. And then you have a lot of disk space. What do I have? <laughs> yeah, I have a problem. Lost information, potentially. A lot it's of information. A feature. Do I have backup? Do I have a way of getting all of this stuff back? Mm, what am I going to do? Okay, okay. wie viel Kram brauche ich denn noch? Tool, I don't know. Somebody breaking into my server and rmrfing the whole thing because they don't know what's on it. Not valuable to them, but they just want to leave a message. Is a name. Story the thing. Start learning. How does it hurt me? Now I'm going to start with the physical. This is important to me because I'm a military emergency management specialist. I've done a ton of FEMA classes. I uh, I've done a lot of training on this. And all of this stuff, and we do a lot of training on a person. Okay? Everybody has heard the term digital Pearl Harbor, right? You know? Okay. So the idea behind the digital Pearl Harbor is a bit. Cliffhanger, what is the idea between digital what was? Pearl Harbor? I have not understood. Okay, Leute, um, das war Aaron Jones' Introduction to Freenet. 
Ähm, ein Talk auf dem Channel Brian Clough. Äh, wir sind jetzt bei Minute 57 und 34 Sekunden. Wenn ihr da weiterschauen wollt, Link ist wie immer in der Beschreibung. Und ja, das äh, hier, der Minecraft-Server, auf dem hier gespielt wurde, das ist sillywoon.com, ist da die Domain, um den zu erreichen. Alternativ der IP-Adresse 149.202.127.134. Das ist der gratis erreichbare Minecraft-Server Laser Golden Land, ähm, der momentan keine Regeln hat. Und das ist auch geplant, dass der weiterhin keine Regeln haben wird. Genau, und, ähm, ja, und weiterhin auch online bleiben wird. Also, Aaron Jones, Aaron Jones Introduction to Freenet, Laser Land, alle Infos da, wir sehen uns in der nächsten Folge.